uh, uh, Mr. Chair, for that generous uh, introduction. You have always been very kind. And my thanks also uh, go to uh, CIWS for giving me this honor to uh, uh, speak on a topic which is um, uh, contemporary importance as has been highlighted by Ambassador Tariq Usman Haider in his speech uh, as well. Uh, although you heard in the introduction that uh, uh, about my official position, but uh, today uh, whatever I'm going to speak is based my uh, is based on my personal experience and uh, my personal uh, views. Uh, I talk to you in the uh, allotted time on the UN Security Council Resolution 1540 Chemical Weapons Convention. Uh, but on this, I'll be very brief because you are going, to, you have heard, and you are going to hear more about the uh, main focus of uh, chemical weapons uh, convention. And then uh, a very interesting area, which is the uh, complementarity between the CWC and 1540, uh, and uh, uh, at the before concluding, I'll present two very interesting tables. Uh, which is which would be a sort of comparative analysis of 1540 and uh, CWC uh, chemicals weapon convention. Uh, United Nations Security Council Resolution 1540 was adopted in uh, April 2004 under Chapter 7 of the United Nations Char Charter and is legally binding on all uh, UN member states. This resolution, in fact, builds on the previous or the earlier major non-proliferation treaties and arrangements by further limiting access to weapons of mass destruction, their transfer and use, etc. And these treaties, uh, you may be well aware of them. Uh, some of them are uh, uh, include non-proliferation treaty, the Chemical Weapons Convention, Biological and Toxin Weapon Convention, and Associated Export Control Regimes. Uh, United Nations Security Council Resolution 1540 also mandates the imposition of appropriate export controls aimed at strengthening border and port detection capabilities and preventing the trafficking in materials and technologies related to the productions of nuclear, chemical and biological weapons. Further, member states are required to adopt legislative, regulatory, and enforcement measures to achieve the objectives of UNSCR 1540. Uh, for our discussion today, uh, three paras, the operating paras uh, or operative paras that are most important are number one is operative para number one of uh, UNSCR 1540. Uh, this puts obligation uh, to refrain uh, states from providing any sort of support to non-state actors that may attempt to develop, acquire, manufacture, possess, transport, transfer, or use nuclear, chemical, or biological weapons or their me means of uh, delivery. Now pay very particular attention to the difference that one can identify between the CWC obligations and uh, the UNSCR and I'll talk about the CWC obligations as well in a short while. Operative para 2 of UNSCR, uh, it puts obligation in accordance with national procedures to adopt and enforce appropriate effective laws uh, which prohibit any non-state actor to acquire, possess, develop, transport, transfer or use nuclear, chemical or biological weapons and their means of delivery, in particular for terrorist purposes, as well as any attempt to assist in any form, whether they be engaging in uh, any of the uh, activities, participating, assisting or financing. Operative para 3 uh, 
it puts obligation or imposes obligations uh, related to uh, developing, maintaining appropriate, effective measures. It requires the states to develop, maintain, and uh, appropriate, effective uh, measures to account for and secure such items in production, use, storage, or transport. Also, states are required to develop and maintain appropriate, effective, physical protection measures. Then developing and maintaining uh, border controls and law enforcement to prevent illicit trafficking and brokering uh, as well as brokering. Also, uh, the states are required to develop and maintain <coughs> Uh, legislative, regulatory, and enforcement measures related to export, re-export, transit, and transshipment of materials that would be used for weapons of mass destruction <coughs> and their delivery systems. Uh, very briefly about the Chemical Weapons Convention, you have uh, heard about it uh, before uh, in the first presentation as well. It's a milestone agreement. And not only is this the uh, first disarmament treaty to include a, a time uh, bound or time frame for the elimination of an entire class of weapons of mass destruction, <coughs> chemical weapons. But it is also the first multilateral arms control treaty to incorporate an extensive and expansive verification regime. Uh, CWC uh, is implemented, or Chemical Weapons Convention uh, is implemented through a, an organization called the Organization for Intervention of Chemical Weapons, OPCW, which is mandated to implement uh, a comprehensive prohibition on chemi chemical weapons. Uh, this is uh, codified in the CWC. The four pillars of this convention uh, are, first is the disarmament, which is stipulated in Article 1, 3, 4, and 5 of the Convention. Non-proliferation, uh, enshrined in Article 6. Assistance and protection, Article 10. And international cooperation, Article 11 of the Convention. Uh, the next two, three slides would give you uh, a general overview of the <coughs> articles and um, their uh, brief description of what each <coughs> article uh, is meant for. Article 1 is very important. Uh, it uh, lays down general obligations uh, on prohibiting development, production, acquisition, retention, stockpiling, transfer, and use. And if you compare these wordings uh, with the obligations that are uh, mandated under the United Nations Security uh, Council Resolution 1540, you can notice that physical protection and uh, transportation is not covered here. Uh, under this article, uh, each state party is required to det destroy chemical weapons and chemi chemical weapons production facilities. Article 2 uh, is about uh, certain definitions which are used in the convention. Article 3 talks about the declarations under which each state party uh, shall not later than 30 days after the conventions, a convention enters into force for it, submit to the OPCW detailed declaration with respect to chemical weapons including old and abandoned uh, chemical weapons and chemical weapons production facilities providing a general plan for their de de destruction as well. Article 4 uh, talks about the uh, chemical weapons, the nature of chemical weapons, how declarations have to be made, and uh, uh, what specific uh, verification uh, article applies to those weapons. Article 5 again uh, is about the chemical weapon production facilities, 6 is activities which are not prohibited under the convention and uh, Ambassador Tariq Usman has also made a mention of this. Article 7 is about the national implementation measures which is 
very, very important and lays down uh, uh, the requirements for countries uh, to have an implement or implementation system. Article 8 is about the organization itself and then other articles which are related to consultation, cooperation, fact-finding, assistance and protection, etc., economic and technological development, again a very important uh, article of the Chemical Weapons uh, Convention. Right. Some key elements uh, in effective implementation of the CWC are uh, displayed here on the screen. Uh, the countries are expected to establish a national authority, a le legal framework, also set up a system through which they can outreach uh, to the relevant industry and monitor the activities of uh, the industry and so that it is ensured that legitimate, legitimate activities are undertaken in compliance with the CWC. Uh, establishment of effective border and customs control and monitoring of trade in CWC controlled chemicals. Uh, awareness raising of importers, exporters and others who are involved in dealing with uh, uh, chemical uh, precursors. Effective communication between the national authority, licensing authority, if it is separate than the national authority, and customs and border authorities. Training and tools for customs and uh, border authorities. And you heard in the morning in the keynote speech, uh, Madam Foreign Secretary elaborately covered the steps that Pakistan has taken, including uh, setting up uh, the National Authority on Chemical Weapons Convention, the uh, implementation ordinance of 2000 and implementation rules of 2010, and how National Authority interacts with uh, OPCW. Uh, on the complementarity uh, between United Nations Security Council Resolution 1540 and CWC, uh, the measures that are outlined in the operative paragraphs of UNSCR 1540 that deals with chemical weapons correspond to obligations that state parties have already assumed under CWC. Uh, for example, operative para of United Nations, uh, UNSCR 1540 stipulates that states, states shall refrain from providing any form of support to non-state actors in matters related to uh, WMDs. This is fully in line with the general obligations of Article 1 of uh, CWC. Article 1D of CWC says that parties undertake never to assist, encourage or induce in any way anyone to engage in any activity prohibited to a state party under this convention. So this also includes individuals and other entities. Operative para 2 serves the same purpose for uh, UNSCR 1540 that Article 7 does for CWC, which establishes the requirements for national implementation measures. Requirements and activities carried out by state parties under CWC also enable states parties to fulfill their obligations under UNSCR 1540 uh, in terms of setting up domestic legislation and implement, uh, implementation, criminalizing prohibited activities and establishing enforcement uh, measures. Uh, OPCW implements uh, a wide range of uh, program areas that support the objectives of UNSCR 1540. OPCW makes a substantial contribution by directly supporting these objectives. Uh, nearly 95% of the world's declared chemical weapons have been destroyed under international verification, including the Syrian and Libyan uh, chemical weapons. Uh, this amounts to more than 70,000 tons of the deadliest poison uh, poisons ever produced. Obligation created by CWC branch off in two main areas. One, industry verification and data reporting on the one hand and promulgation and enforcement of national legislation on the other. And this is done through uh, conducting industry inspection 
uh, which is considered to be the most direct non-proliferation and confidence uh, uh, building measures. OPCW has so far carried out 3,500 industry inspections to verify that the production and consumption of chemi chemical weapons are intended for solely peaceful purposes. And in case of Pakistan, you heard Ambassador Tariq Usman Haider again uh, that Pakistan has conducted uh, 15 uh, inspections, routine inspections. OPCW's open working, uh, uh, open-ended working group also, uh, which uh, on terrorism regularly reviews the opportunities for enhanced interaction and coordination between the concerned international entities including the 1540 mechanism. OPCW has also signed an MOU with the World Customs Organization that sets the terms for close coordination with the World Customs Organization, which is essential for enforcement of the transfers regime on global scale. Uh, now, just uh, this is very interesting slide which I pulled out from the comprehensive review uh, that was done by uh, 1514 2016. If you look at the table here, uh, this comprehensive review of 2016 includes a comparison of the number of member states that have taken measures to meet the obligation under paragraph 2 of resolution 1514. The number of all measures related to chemical weapons are higher than those for nuclear or biological weapons. The matrix data that was developed uh, uh, by um, as in, in the process of this uh, review uh, by 1540 indicate that there has been a, an absolute increase of 15% in measures recorded covering the obligations in, under paragraph 2 in relation to chemical weapons and in particular that such prohibitions represent a 74% implementation rate overall. There has also been a sizable increase to 175 in the number of states which have a legal framework in place to prohibit the use of chemical weapons by non-state actor uh, by comparison uh, with 150 states in 2011. Similarly, uh, 161 states, 161 states have in place a legal framework to prohibit the manufacture of chemical weapons by non-state actors uh, compared with 135 in 2011. Uh, now, this is the uh, table which gives a comparison uh, of prohibited activities under United Nations Security Council uh, Resolution 1540 uh, and the WWC. Uh, all activities, the, both these arrangements complement each other uh, and if you see the transport area is blank under the column of CTCC because CWC does not talk about the transport uh, sir. Uh, I thank you very much for uh, a very patient listening and if there are any questions